Son, I think it's time we had the talk. Oh, come on, Dad. Not now. <sighs> yes, son. Uh, I think it's time. And I just, I just need to know that you're taking the proper precautions and, and you're using protection. Seriously, Dad, I know. I've seen the videos on the internet. Well, I just want to make sure that you're being safe. But since you already know, do you have any questions for me? Well, there's one thing that I've been wondering. Should I double up? Well, your mother and I did some testing a while back on that, and we found that doubling up certainly is not necessary, but it doesn't hurt to have that extra layer in there. Okay, so it doesn't really affect the, you know, quality or the end product? Honestly, not enough that you're going to be able to notice. But here, I just want to help, and I want you to have this. Wow. Thanks for looking out, Dad. New LCD screens are not cheap. Hey everybody, Chris with Random Weekend Adventures here. I apologize for the intro, I just could not resist. But I wanted to take today uh, to talk a little bit about something that's come up uh, quite a bit recently in our Facebook groups as well as uh, any YouTube videos that I could find in regards to adding a screen protector to your 3D printer. Um, specifically, I'll be talking about my AnyCubic Photon Mono X. Um, seems to be probably the most common one that does definitely need a screen protector. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as we get in here, but I wanted to test the stock screen protector, if you want to call it that, uh, the film that comes with your printer. I then went ahead and took it off uh, and then added a single screen protector and then also a second screen protector, which is kind of the general recommendation throughout most um, of our, our groups that own the Photon X, Mono X, sorry. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. I printed some models up. Uh, go through each one of those. We can take a look and see does it make a difference or does it really not make a difference? You know, and what settings do we need to apply uh, depending on which one of those options that we choose to use? So let's go ahead and get started on that. So I will take just a couple of minutes to go through each and every single one of these uh, in detail uh, so we can take a look. But first things first, I want to just mention a couple things. So you'll notice that the staff of his is broken on almost every single one of these. That is not the printer's fault. It is not the resin's fault. And it has nothing to do with the settings or the changes that we're talking about in this video. Um, I'm dumb and drop something on my desk where these were sitting and snapped almost every single one of them actually I did snap every single one of them this is the one just the only one that i had the time to glue and the rest of them i just it wasn't worth trying to glue such a small part um but again my fault not the resin's fault or the printer's fault or anything to do with the settings or the screen protectors um so with that out of the way i want to talk about each and every single one of these uh so from left to right we have the stock screen protector how we started no screen protector. I took that risk for you guys. One screen protector and then the double screen protector. So I'm just going to come right out and say that the quality difference between these is so minimal um, that I don't think it really matters. But I'll talk a little bit more in detail as to why that is kind of in my conclusion. But just know that you're not gonna see the huge differences between these models. So what I did is I went ahead and printed a base just calibration. This is the thinner version of this model because I didn't need all of the details within the thicker one that we typically use for a resin printer. 
Um, so this was kind of the base at where I started with just one screen protector. Uh, 2.1 seconds is where I just started. It is a little bit overexposed, um, but I kind of wanted that because I knew as I added screen protectors, I was more than likely going to need more exposure. So that is why we went 2.1 seconds. I typically print at 1.8 to 1.9. And again, this is the gray rich opto uh, normal resin, which I have had amazing results with. And it's probably going to be my go-to resin moving forward just because of the price of it. So you guys check that out. I'll put a link to, in the description uh, where you can buy it on Amazon or you can buy it directly from rich opto, save a couple bucks. So this is a stock. Again, this one here is the no screen protector. This one here is one screen protector. And then this one here is two screen protectors. So I just want to show, it, they're so subtle. Um, no matter how many high resolution f pictures that I put in this video, you're not going to see it. And I don't have a USB microscope in order to show you guys this. But I do want to at least show these two because this is where the biggest difference lies is going to be in the no screen protector and the two screen protectors, which is what most people run and what I'm running now. Um, so you can pretty clearly see the exposure difference here. We can see a little bit crisper, you know, of an image here, whereas here it looks like I am a little bit underexposed. I'm starting to kind of lose a little bit of that space between those two points in the infinity symbol. Uh, you can see that these are just barely touching, whereas they're definitely touching here because again, this is gonna be a little bit overexposed. But again, it just shows that the difference that a screen protector actually makes. So every single one of these was printed under the exact same settings. It was the same file on the USB stick. So keep that in mind, it didn't change any settings. So Great, okay, we looked at calibration pucks. How does that really affect me in reality? So this is um, the musical priest from the August collection box for the Patreons for Signum Workshop. Um, that's pretty much the only Patreon that I use anymore because they just provide me with the best miniatures, the best selection of miniatures, and I just don't need anybody else. They fulfill everything that I need for collecting, printing, and even selling uh, miniatures. So I'll, again, have a link in the description below for those guys. Um, but they are absolutely fantastic. And my hope is to basically make a video to showcase their models each and every single month. Uh, and then I may actually use those models to do a let's play of the Battle of Signum, you know, Battle of Honor, game so i think that would be kind of fun to uh, to do and get more people interested in it because it's a really 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 exciting uh i guess miniature strategy slash card game and they do a really good job with it so anyways enough about them um but yeah so we look at this this is again with no no screen protector and you can see the details i mean are absolutely just phenomenal all of the writing on his pipe organs, on his sash back here, all the designs, everything is just absolutely fantastic. Now, again, same settings where I kind of started to lose some of the details towards the tip here. I had a support fail. You know, the details are all right, but I, it's really hard to see. But they're down there on the organ there with the mice, the detail on the two screen protectors just is not quite there. And again, that's sort of to be expected, but if you handed me both of these, I would probably not be able to differentiate from one to the other. I've stared at these things and tried to nitpick every little detail that I possibly can, and it's so, so fine trying to figure out what details are better and which ones are worse. So not the most exciting result in the world, but in all honesty, I think it 
gave me a lot of peace of mind knowing that, okay, having those screen protectors on the, you know, on, on the Mono X was gonna give me that security, but at the same time, it wasn't gonna affect my print quality. So what I found out is that each screen protector, at least with this particular resin, and I'm sure it's gonna be about the same with each resin, each screen protector is gonna increase uh, your exposure time by one tenth of a second. So if you're printing off at 1.8 seconds, I would recommend if you're using a single screen protector to do 1.9 seconds, if you're doing two, to do two seconds flat. And as simple as that. Um, I have done a whole bunch of other miniatures that turned out phenomenally uh, with the two screen protectors printing out at about 1.95 seconds or 1.2 seconds depending on uh, the temperature in the room at the time of printing. So like I said, not a super exciting result, but that is the result. So I'm gonna leave you guys with kind of a nice collage of the um, the models on a 360 degree rotation so you can take a look at them you can pause the video maybe look for some decent details um, and then I'll be right back with you to conclude this rather short but I feel educational video So, what did I learn? Well, I learned that overall, screen protectors don't really affect your prints all that much. Now, that's kind of to be expected, considering that uh, the majority of clear, so we're not talking about the satin or sponge-proof screen protectors, but the clear screen protectors generally quote about 95 to 98% total light transmission, so it's kind of expected that yeah, it's not gonna make that much of a difference, right? It's letting the UV through. It has really no effect on the uh, pixelation whatsoever. So it's not like it's gonna anti-alias for you or smooth edges or do anything like that. Uh, hence losing print quality. But because of that just little bit of light transmission loss, you're talking a couple percent points per screen protector, then it makes sense that yes, I need to increase my exposure time based on the amount of light transmission that's lost through the screen protector, which in this case, as I found out, was about a percent, maybe 2%, um, just with the ones that I used, and I will be sure to link them in the description. But you can use any old screen protector. Just make sure that it is a plastic screen protector, not a tempered glass one, uh, because it is not a perfect fit, so you are gonna have to cut it to size. Uh, I use the iPad Air 3, I believe. Again, I'll link it down below. And the first screen, prote screen protector I put on definitely had to be cut to the size of the original of the LCD screen on the Mono X. Uh, and then the second screen protector, you can just leave it at size. Um, I would highly recommend using the two, uh, just because it, it fills a, kind of that gap that the tape around the edge of the LCD screen creates, you fill that in with that initial screen protector, which then the second screen protector can lay flush with both your screen protector, the tape, and then the aluminum around the edges. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna ensure that if you do have a broken uh, you know, FEP sheet, that it's not going to leak down and leach its way under the screen protector. It's not gonna get onto the LCD or onto the tape around the LCD, any of that. Um, I want to say right now the replacements are $50, $60 for an LCD screen. Screen protector, you get three of them for like nine, ten bucks. So it's absolutely worth the investment to do it and you're not going to see issues with print quality. Like I said um, in the video, I showed you all of the different prints that I've done uh, since adding in the two screen protectors 
and I haven't taken much of a hit in quality whatsoever. Um, clearly there's obvious issues that I have with supports and things um, when I'm trying to dial in resins or if I'm trying to mess with my support settings, but I had that before I put Scream Tractor on. So I don't think that the quality um, or the end product has any effect whatsoever in Scream Protectors, and I did a ton of testing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I will see you next time. It's probably just going to be a video uh, showcasing some miniatures from Signum Workshop. Uh, they're not a sponsor of mine. I am not affiliated with them in any way other than I pay for the right to sell their miniatures on my Etsy page. Uh, but I really like what those guys have going on. Uh, their game is just games are just phenomenal. Um, and I'm hoping to start filming some Let's Plays of those to try and get the word out. Uh, I think last time I looked we had 500 Patreons. Uh, I'd like to see if we can get that up to a thousand and really help these guys out so they can just keep providing us with tons and tons of miniatures, unique miniatures each month uh, for their various factions within the, uh, the world of Signum. Uh, it's pretty cool. So, and then I also want to do a special thanks uh, to Rich Opto. They provided me with all of the resin that I used uh, for any of these miniatures. Uh, they saw my initial review of their product, which I loved, and uh, they were gracious enough to provide me with some more uh, to provide some honest feedback. So look forward to some of those videos in the future. Uh, I have an ABS-like resin from them, I'm really excited about, and then I have two water uh, washable resins too, so something that uh, I haven't actually used in quite a while because I wasn't really happy with the, the previous water washable resins. Um, so I'm hoping that theirs is very different and provides me with a really good level of detail uh, because I do not like having a bunch of IPA sitting around not in use. So again, that's a video for another day, how I go through and recycle. Uh, and clean up my IPA and what I do while I'm waiting for that process to uh, complete. So look forward to another video there too. But again, thank you guys. Appreciate you as always. Any questions, put them down below. I will be happy to get to them. Um, but feel free to check out any of the links below. And uh, happy 3D printing. And go on a random weekend adventure once it starts cooling down a little bit here. All right, guys, take care.